Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm George Schlackeck, the one and only. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about riding your bicycle on the sidewalk. I took you along on one of my regular rides to show exactly what I was talking about and why I sometimes use sidewalks with my bike. I was hoping to raise awareness of a problem and I'm still working on that mission. The problem is that there is a lack of safe bike routes in many cities and especially in Edmonton because that's where I live and experience this firsthand. I was hoping to make a follow-up video where I would ask other cyclists on camera if they too were using sidewalks to ride on. Due to the current pandemic, it has pretty much become impossible to meet and interview people. However, my last video has caused a bit of a discussion in the comment section and on Facebook. It turns out that many of us have the same problem and while no one seems to make sidewalks their first choice, most will resort to riding there when there's no other safe option. Let's face it, sidewalks are poorly designed, often even for walking. For cyclists, they mean a bumpy, slow ride with constant interruptions and dangerous spots at every intersection, including driveways and back alleys. Trust me, Nobody wants to ride in that environment. What makes many of us do it anyways, is that we'd like, like to survive, survive another, another day. day. Cycling is a fantastic mode of transportation that has the potential to improve public health, stop climate change, and make our cities more livable. Unfortunately, this isn't going to happen if people have to risk their lives every time they try to get somewhere by bike. And that's the sad reality we live in in North America today. Cycling is awesome, but it's dangerous and that scares many people off altogether, while others, including myself, choose to break bylaws just to avoid getting killed. Motorists these days tend to take the road for granted as a place to drive their vehicles. They consider it their right and forget how privileged they are. What's more, many new cars now have a nice big screen full of distractions right on their dash. And then of course, there are smartphones. Let me tell you, there is nothing smart about using one of those while you're operating a vehicle that can literally kill people. Cyclists are dying on our roads. Don't believe me? <laughs> According to Statistics Canada, from 1994 through 2012, 1,408 cyclists died in crashes. That's an average of 74 each year. Just last week, a terrible accident near Las Vegas killed five cyclists instantly. They got hit by a truck while riding behind an escort vehicle. This happened on the highway with a speed limit of 75 miles an hour. According to Tran BC, people riding a bicycle have the same rights and responsibilities as those driving a motor vehicle. This rule completely ignores how vulnerable cyclists are in traffic. Sharing the road with cars is the single most dangerous aspect of cycling, period. In recent years, many cities, including Edmonton, have made improvements to their bicycle infrastructure. But many haven't changed their bylaws to protect cyclists in the meantime. Since it is impossible to build a safe cycling network overnight, we need to demand changes that can be implemented right away. The comments on my channel and on Facebook show that immediate changes are needed. Let me read you just a few samples. This one here is from Chris, who is local to Edmonton. I've been riding mostly on the sidewalks the last two weeks because the roads are too treacherous. 
soft with warm weather like today than skating rinks the rest of the time. Even in the summer I'll choose a sidewalk if a road doesn't provide space for a cyclist or traffic is too heavy or fast. Michael says, Staying safe sometimes means breaking the rules. He goes on explaining his behavior while riding on the sidewalk, which is, by the way, very cautious and considerate toward pedestrians. Staying safe sometimes means breaking the rules? Those rules are worthless. They need to be changed. Thank you for that invaluable comment, Michael. We can do without rules that put us at greater risk. Next one is from Shane, a volunteer with Bike Edmonton. I got five tickets one summer, made the front page of the journal, never been bothered once in my vehicle, lol. Shane and I have something in common. We both made the front page of the journal for that same offense. I was outraged after just one ticket and reporters were willing to go public with it. Why did Shane get nailed five times, you might ask? Well, that brings me to another aspect of this whole debate. Racial profiling. Shane happens to be Native American. He's a great guy, by the way, who volunteers a lot of hours to help others repair their bikes. He's every bit as passionate about cycling as I am, and you can take it as a given that the sidewalk wasn't his first choice. Cops can abuse the cycling bylaw to harass people. It gives them a perfect excuse to stop someone who looks a certain way while others can get away with the same offenses. On the Edmonton Facebook group Yegbike, the thread is half a mile long. It starts with Keith. Always ride where it's safest. The cops won't bust you for riding on the sidewalk in winter if the roads are dangerous or impassable. Problem with that is you're still breaking a law when, you're, when you clearly shouldn't have to. Then Jay asks an interesting question. Is this a truth only for white people though? I've never had issues, but I have also assumed that I've been benefiting from white privilege in that case. I think Jay is on to something. Laura replies. Yeah, cops ticket people in the areas of the city with no bike lanes, even when the roads are dangerous. She easily backs this up, posting a link to an article in the Edmonton Journal which is about none other than our native friend, Shane. I'll post a link to this article in the description below because it's interesting. It clearly confirms that a more vulnerable part of our population is targeted for those tickets most often. Here's a quote. Edmonton police wrote up 1,480 tickets for cycling on the sidewalk in the last five years. I asked for the locations of each offense and mapped them. They're highly concentrated in the inner city on 118th Avenue, a few on 111th Avenue and on the rougher part of Stony Plain Road. Those definitely aren't the richest areas in the city. Another comment by Jay, who apparently had first-hand experience with the court system, confirms this again. If we're talking about breaking the law as cyclists, policing absolutely is a racial issue. This isn't even debatable. So perhaps the reality is that this bylaw is a tool of systemic racism, a problem that is well ingrained in Canadian society. Jocelyn is thinking of paying the fine as life insurance. She adds that she hasn't received a ticket so far. It gets interesting when Chad joins the conversation by suggesting that This is still a good way to get smoked. He's got a point there. However, 
which is worse? Further down, Ken clarifies this very well by saying this. It depends on the route. In the winter, on a busy road with wind rows, it's safer to use a sidewalk for a few blocks than riding on the road with uncertain traction and in the dark. This is a situation I find myself in frequently right here in my neighborhood. I might add that most often sidewalks here are free of pedestrians. But Ken gets attacked for his comment by none other than the Chad. I'll disagree to that. Ride in the ruts with a bike light and you'll save yourself from getting smoked. Who cares about the cars behind you? You're a vehicle and they have to yield to the vehicle in front of them, so let them wait. He comes back with more comments that turn into personal attacks. As it is typical for Facebook threads, some confront him about it and the conversation gets heated. But the point is this, riding in the ruts with a bike light? It's not the solution. You'd better care about the cars behind you because most often the people driving them are in a hurry. What's worse, they might also be texting on their phone. You basically have to be suicidal to follow Chad's advice and most understand that. The ones that don't may not actually be cyclists at all. A comment from Heather probably sums up what many of us are doing. She avoids the sidewalk, but immediately gives reasons for taking the sidewalks. They are. Number one, roads are dangerously full of brown sugar. Two, snow is too deep or ice too glare for me to gain any traction. And number three, the roads are torn up and there's literally no other way for me to ride the route I need to go. I get off the sidewalks as soon as safely possible. I think that is reasonable. The only issue is that we're still breaking the law. When a law is not in the best interest of the people and instead puts many of us in danger, then it needs to be changed. The comments cited here are local to Edmonton, but this doesn't mean they're irrelevant elsewhere. I believe we have a problem where cyclists are second-class citizens who are not welcome on roads nor sidewalks. They commonly get blamed for traffic problems they didn't cause and there's still opposition to spending more money on safe cycling infrastructure. All over North America, typical urban arterial roads have four or six lanes for motorized traffic and none for bicycles. Why do we keep catering to motorists when this kind of traffic has been proven to destroy our environment? Besides air pollution from burning fossil fuels, cars and trucks have turned our cities into hostile environments for people. According to the Government of Canada, in 2018, the number of motor vehicle fatalities was 1,922, which is up 3.6% from 2017. This isn't as much as COVID, which is over 13,000 as of today, but isn't it a big enough number to demand some changes? I'll gladly cycle on the road if serious efforts are made to improve safety, but so far this hasn't happened. Instead, governments adopt slogans such as Vision Zero to appear as if they're actually committed to tackle the problem. Vision Zero states the objective of reaching zero traffic fatalities. On Edmonton's website, it sounds like this. Vision Zero principles. No loss of life is acceptable. Traffic fatalities and serious injuries are preventable. We all make mistakes. We are all physically vulnerable when involved in motor vehicle collisions. Eliminating fatalities and serious injuries requires Edmontonians and the city to prioritize safety. 
The problem here is that there's no mention of the difference between motorists, cyclists and pedestrians. We are all vulnerable. How are we supposed to achieve zero traffic fatalities if we can't accept the simple truth that cyclists are more vulnerable on hazardous roads? This isn't about war against a car or anything like that, but it is a battle for cyclists and motorists will definitely have to give up some of their privilege to the road. This change won't come overnight, but a simple bylaw can be changed by a city council in a session. We need to demand this change now. We need to demand this change now. We need to demand this change now. Well, thank you for listening to my rant. I'm passionate about cycling and would love your support. You can start by subscribing to my channel and sharing this video. We cyclists need to make our voices heard and that is my goal. Thank you.